tripped and fell down the Daily Mail rabbit hole. Sucked in by its gravity to a land of insanity, hitting my head on branches of bigger trees. And when they crack, the echo snaps, go back to where you came from. You don't belong here. Snagging, scratching, splintering, and trying to pull me into them. Down, 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 I fell through the dirt and spam around endlessly like a washing machine tripping on ecstasy. <laughs> Seeing pictures of lost girls before me, wondering where they could be. Whether victims of paedophile celebrities or just another kid left home at 16. Then, finally, I could fall no further. I regained consciousness to see a can of red stripe wearing a ruddy bow tie commanding me to drink its insides. So, happily, I obliged. <coughs> but with every gulp ink ran down the walls, forming warnings of a binge-drinking Britain. Are children really being puppeteered by cans of beer? Metamorphosing them into crooks and thieves intent on nothing but trying to breed. Can a 500 milliliter can really be the cause of the flaws of a whole generation of our nation? Or is this simply another scapegoat for our own human nature? As I pondered and wondered and chundered, my stomach's alarm bell started to shake. And a table revealed itself, proudly holding the most magnificent cake with countless kaleidoscopic colours. Chocolate, cheese, strawberries and eat me written in, sk in Skittles calligraphy. Mouthful after mouthful, I gorged in delight, but it, but it had been laced by some serpentine spite, as this time the ink gushed forth from my eyes, hissing of obesity and gluttony as it filled every part of me, unable to breathe and uncontrollably, the ink kept transforming me, too fat, too thin, too tall, too small, too black, too white, all right. I lay emaciated on the floor with the remnants of ink dribbling down my chin. And as I wondered what crazy world this could be, I received an invitation to the Mad Hatter's UKIP party. <laughs> At the head of the table stood a toad pouring beer down his ears to rapturous applause from all his peers, whilst the snakes, rats and flabby cats wondered why they hadn't thought of doing that. So I watched as all around grabbed their drinks and poured them down, and I wondered if there was any sense here to be found. Then I discovered a dormant mouse, oblivious to the chaos all around. Apparently. His name was Gove, and he had decided to be completely comatose until somehow the beast that he was entrusted with guarding had, had simply slain itself so that he could put up his paws and blame someone else. This seemed a queer idea to me, and I expressed precisely this when all went quieter than a snake's hiss. As the toad belched forth in a solemn tone, you'll find nothing queer around here. Go back to from whence you came and never come back to our land again when all of a sudden a mob came thundering through with pitchforks and lit torches to aid their coup, which I initially thought was meant for me, until I saw the banners picturing their queen, accompanied by them chanting like an incantation, off with her head, off with her head. So I ran in front to try and find her majesty to warn her of this regicide. But what I found was not a palace by any leap of the mind. It was a pale grey council house perched upon a grassy mound. Inside, a starving skeleton sat upon her throne, watching the crumbling decadence of her home sheltered from the shouts and the screams of the chimpanzees bellowing as they bare their teeth. Burn the witch. Why should, we, why should we work and slave while she gets paid to sit and do nothing but decay? The walls reverberate and the windows crack as her penurious palace starts to collapse, but the queen silently sits as her chandelier falls, like precipitate, like the daggers of the Daily Mail down, down, down towards her head. The door flies off its hinges as the riot erupts, desperate to try and find her to get some money from the uptight miser, but there she sits, with a ruby heart shape upon her pate. The parting gift of the passing glass, the shot flew straight through before it hit the ground, shattering into diamonds all around, so even in death she retains her jewels. <laughs> Slowly, I grew back to normal size and looked on all below with incredulous eyes, dwelling on it like an obscene dream, the prejudice, politics and benefits queen. But this is a world that many bring into their home, not somewhere hidden down the rabbit hole. <laughs>